Hi, this is Morgan at the Wyalusing Valley Museum. Welcome to an episode of How Did It Work? Historical Technology Stories from the Wyalusing Valley Museum. To learn more about the museum and its hours and programs, please visit wyalusingmuseum.com. This episode, we'll be exploring Omi's Ferry. In 1869, there were three ferries connecting Wyalusing Township to Wilmot, Terry, and Asylum Townships on the other side of the river. From downstream to upstream, it was Stalford's Ferry, Wells Ferry, and Omi's Ferry. The museum has a photograph of Omi's Ferry from the late 1800s, as well as an oral history interview with Charles Omi in 1966, just a month before his 99th birthday. Well, way back uh, earlier times, say the mill was built in 27. That's 1827. And I think the ferry was built at the same time because you had to have the ferry when you got the mill. If you didn't, you couldn't get over there. So, but uh, the I can remember a little about the ferry boat. The uh, boat was built long enough so that it would take at least two rigs, I think two Teams could go on with, uh, say, big wagons, uh, hay riggings or so on like that. If they were buggies, I think you could put on three, but not any more than that. The photo you're looking at now is of the Mishapin Ferry. Both Omi's Ferry and Mishapin were cable ferries. I had to have a ferryman, and, uh, well, when you come to the river on our side of the river, you'd have to holler over to the ferryman to come over and get you. You had a bell. Had it well, you had a bell for a while, some of the time hollering. I can holler How much yet. Did it cost? Oh, about 20 cents if he was going right over and back. If he was going over to the mill with a team, well, it wasn't anything. They'd grind your grist and take you over there to get your grist. So, well, then there, a farmer took advantage. There was a blacksmith shop over on that side. And while they was grinding the grist, take your team, go up and get them shot. And that way you'd get across the river and back without any expense. Of course, the ferry boat was tied up in the wintertime, tied up and out of use, put away. And, you, and that was the trouble with the mill. You could, you, it was times and lots of time you couldn't get over there at all. You'd cross on the ice for a while, and then when the ice was going out, or before that even, ice was running, so they didn't run the ferry boat. That made it kind of bad. Let's say we have a river, and as communities build up on either side, they'd like to get across from one bank to the other. However, the current is going to make that a little difficult to do with a wagon load of goods. A reaction cable ferry uses fairly simple physics to transport wagons and buggies from one side of a river to the other. Let's hear how Charles Omi describes it. Ran had to have a ferry wire, a cable went across, and then uh, a little car wheels on it. That means it run on that cable from across the river from side to side. From that little car, there ran two, uh, two small ropes down to your ferry boat, a windlass on each end of the boat, so you could pull either end of the boat up or let it out. And when you was going one way, you'd let it out and when you're going the other way, you do the other way. Whether I make that plain or not, I don't believe I do. The elevated cable keeps the ferry from moving downstream, and the bridle ropes on the windlasses let the ferryman adjust the angle and transfer the downstream energy into horizontal energy, pushing the ferry across to the other bank without any motors or rowing. Reaction cable ferries are only one of the many ingenious ways people have used a cable to get from one side of a river to the other. If you would like to see a modern cable ferry in action, look in the description below for links to other videos of rudder-operated ferries in Canada and Switzerland. How Did It Work is produced by the Wyalusing Valley Museum. You can learn more about Wyalusing Valley history by visiting the museum in person. Check our website to find out about open hours and programs. Do you recall swimming in the river as a boy? Never, because my mother was against it. She wanted me to learn to swim before I went in the water. I was
was always sorry that I didn't learn to swim. I couldn't swim at all.